If you're at 180 steps per minute, that's really great. But if you're not there, should you change it? The answer is no. You don't wanna change the symptom. You don't wanna just take a pill to mask the headache. You wanna get a reason why you have the headache, right? I get asked a lot of questions on 180 steps per minute, what it means, where it came from, is it important, is 180 really the ideal? It's kind of misquoted that every runner should be running at 180 steps per minute. Here's actually what it means. It came from an observation of Olympians of what their stride rates were. Now, should you be striving for 180 steps per minute? Well, there's a reason why people who are at the top of their game are running at 180 steps per minute or more, and that is basically because it's efficient. So if you were to stand just upright, just stand there, not running or anything, you have a center of mass. That center of mass is basically where your navel is and then just a little closer to your spine. And what we care about in running really is where's your center of mass on a vertical axis. And when you're standing up straight, that line kind of goes through, shoots right between your feet and maybe comes up through your head, right? But when you're running, you have a forward lean. You're leaning forward, but your center of mass doesn't lean forward. That axis is still vertical. So you actually start to lean in front of, your head kind of leans in front of your center of mass and your feet kind of are a little bit behind it. Okay, so what does this mean for 180 steps per minute? It means this, if you have a slower cadence, oftentimes you're gonna be landing in front of your center of mass. And that's not good because you break yourself, you slow yourself down, as you have some momentum going forward, you don't want to break yourself. You want to be able to just keep it going. So you want to minimize those breaking forces. And the way that you do that is by landing with your foot as close to your center of mass as you can. All right. Here's where it gets tricky. If you were to land right underneath your center of mass, exactly, it's a point that exists. If you land with your foot right on that point, the problem is you can't run. You can't have any forward momentum. And if your feet land directly underneath you, when you're moving forward, you're going to fall down. And the reason is because when your feet touch the ground, they have to be on the ground for a certain amount of time. Now, that amount of time that they're on the ground could be very low. Now, in an average runner, your foot's going to touch the ground for about 300 milliseconds. It's about a third of a second. And for runners like Usain Bolt or really fast Olympic sprinters, their foot is on the ground for less than a third of that time, 85 to 97 thousandths of a second. So, Let's go back to your running right now. If you're at 180 steps per minute, yes, that's really great. It's ideal in a lot of ways, 180 or more. But if you're not there, should you change it? The answer is no. You shouldn't try to force yourself into 180 steps per minute because it's not the 180 steps per minute in itself that makes you efficient. It's when you have the ability to generate power in, in a short amount of time to be able to, to be able to run at 180 steps per minute, then that's a good thing. But the 180 steps per minute is simply a sign of what your feet are doing, how you're generating force into the ground. So you don't want to change the symptom. You don't want to just take a pill to mask the headache. You want to get a reason why you have the headache, right? And the reason is if you're below 180 steps per minute, it means that you're not generating force quickly into the ground. You're taking too much time. So that time on the ground, that 300 milliseconds, or like an elite sprinter taking about a tenth of a second, in those cases, you're generating force into the ground very quickly, a tenth of a second. And now if your foot is on the ground for longer, like 160 steps per minute, it means you're generating force into the ground for two tenths or three tenths or four tenths or five tenths of a second. Your body needs that time. Your body's not dumb, okay? Your body needs the amount of time that the foot is on the ground in order to generate the force. And force in a certain amount of time is called power. So I'm just from here forward, I'm just going to call that power. Now this could happen because of a couple of things. You can't generate the power that you need at the end of a marathon simply because the muscles are fatigued. And so what you do is you need, you can still travel at the same speed. You, it doesn't mean you can't maintain your pace. You can, you could push harder. You could will yourself to go faster, but your, but your stride frequency may go down because the muscles aren't able to generate power as much because they're tired. That's one of the reasons when you get tired. But if you just go out to run and you're fresh and you still have 160, 170 steps per minute, but you're not tired, that's okay. It doesn't mean you have to be tired in order to have the slower cadence, but it means that you're not generating the power that's needed. So here's two quick fixes for you. When I say quick, they're just the quickest way to remedy this. 
tips. Number one is where are you striking the ground? Where is your foot when you touch the ground? If you strike on your heel, it means almost by definition that you are striking the ground in front of your center of mass. So one of the ways that you can bring your stride shorter, closer to your center of mass, and therefore also increase your turnover rate is by landing on your midfoot. There's two reasons why you could land on your heel. One is your footwear. So if it's your footwear, if you have a large drop, a differential between the heel and the toe, if that's large, you know, 10 millimeters or so, a lot of traditional running shoes, then you may consider moving into a lower drop shoe that will help you land instead of on your heel onto your midfoot. But again, if it's not your shoe and you just land on your heel, even in a zero drop shoe, then if you try to land on your midfoot, in order to have proper form, you would have to slow your pace down because with the, the shorter cadence, you can only generate so much power in the amount of time that you're on the ground. So since your stride is shorter, you reduce the amount of power for you to move forward, which means a slower pace. So the hack number one is land on your midfoot. And I hope that you understand, I'm not telling you to just go out and start landing midfoot. We want to look at the reason. The reason could be your footwear or it could be a lack of power. Let's, let's assume it's the lack of power. What do you do from here? Well, you build up your power. Here's how you do that. It comes in two phases. Number one is you want to increase your strength first, because if you do power exercises, power drills would be things like bounding. They would be like quick feet on the ground. One of my favorites is jump rope. The reason jump rope is so great is because it also teaches you to generate force into the ground right underneath you, right underneath your center of mass, which is really awesome. Jump rope is awesome. If you do a lot of those and you don't have a base of strength, that's a recipe for injury. So before you build any kind of power, you want to have a base of strength. So strength can come from slow, easy miles. Strength can come from doing some weights, some squats, calf raises, lunges, long runs, hill runs. You're building strength. Once you have a base of strength, normally that happens during your base phase of training. Once you move from there, then you can start adding in power drills and plyometric drills, and those are going to increase your power. And when you increase your power, naturally, what you're going to find is that your cadence increases. Now, if your stride length increases, it's simply because there's more power. So you're airborne more. Look at this. Usain Bolt runs a lot faster than you or I. Guaranteed, he's the fastest man who's ever lived. He's running faster than you or I. Yet his feet are on the ground for about a third of the time as you or I. So all of the distance that he's traveling is happening in the air. It's not when he has his foot on the ground. He's, hey, he has his foot on the ground for far shorter than you or I. He just puts power into the ground. He puts force into the ground very quickly. Therefore, he has a very high power output. And when your power output goes up, when you tow off and you leave the ground, well, now you just travel through the air further. You stay in the air longer. So you travel further. All right. So if you're at 180 steps per minute, great. Don't need to change much with that. If you're below it, I encourage you first to measure yourself. Here's the way I like to do it. I actually take two minutes. I look at my watch and I wait till there's some marker that comes around in the 15 second or the top of the minute or something. And I count my strides for two minutes and then I divide by two because then it's really accurate. You don't have to be as type A as me. You could count it for a minute. Heck, you could count it for 30 seconds. But since you're out there anyway, why estimate it? Just count it for a full minute and see what your strides per minute are. Now, if they're below... 180. Don't worry about it. There's nothing wrong at all. You're out there running. You're doing a great job. All you need to do is number one, just become cognizant of where your foot is striking the ground. Is it on the heel? Is it on the midfoot? And you want to do this when you're on flat ground, because if you're going uphill, you're on your toes. Downhill, you're maybe likely on your heels. So when you're on a flat ground, just notice, don't try to change anything. Just simply notice what part of your foot is touching the ground. And if it's hard to feel where it is, you can film yourself on a treadmill. That's a really effective way to do this. And just become cognizant of where you're striking the ground. Then the two hacks that I share with you here are consider changing your footwear if you have a high drop on your footwear. If you don't, then go back to building strength and then power. If you believe that you're already really strong, if you're running relatively high miles, if you're doing workouts and you're doing strength training and you actually believe that you're pretty strong and you don't know where this is coming from, then it might just be a power issue and you can start working on some power drills and graduate to that only after you have strength. Hey, if you liked that video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And the best way to give back is to take the link for this video and send it to just one of your friends. It really helps us grow. We appreciate it. Thank you. We'll see you on the next video.